am I not showing up? I'm back here, everybody, but for some reason I don't see me coming up on there, even though I've added myself to it. So I don't know what it's lagging about. Oh, I know what I need to do. I'm still learning, you guys. <laughs> Hi, everyone, and welcome to season to episode two of Fabrically Speaking Live. Today we're gonna to talk about applique, and not just one type, but all types of applique. I don't know why my phone is making noise, it shouldn't be. I'm gonna move it away. I feel like saying good morning, everybody, because today has been a quite a busy day. We have just been shipping out octahoops and making Octi Hoops didn't take a day off this weekend, just kept making Octi Hoop kits after our free motion embroidery session or episode last week. And I have yet to figure out who won. So know that we will be announcing that with our next newsletter. And I believe I actually have three cameras today. So this should work out really well. Let me get to your comments. And I typed without looking and wrote, hi, every un instead of every one. <laughs> so sorry about that. Hi, Lorinda. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Sandy. S. Haney. Betty. Yolanda. And Better Days is back again. Sandy. Pearl. Sammy. Susan. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me today and uh, oh, what a mess again because sewing is messy, right? Okay, let's test the other camera and I will discuss today's giveaway because every Thursday we give something away and I have some really cool show and tell for you today on the floor. Just making sure I didn't leave it somewhere else. The reason I'm a little bit out of sorts today is because I am preparing my studio for free motion quilting on a king size quilt because I have been begged by people to show how to use the octa hoops for free motion quilting on a king size quilt. And it just so happens that I've been working on a king size quilt for my bed and my bed is a California king which makes it even bigger and I want to free motion quilt it. I'm not going to free motion quilt it all over the place because I like a, a quilt that has a little bit of puff to it, but that's that's not this episode. And I'm going to give you the plans, the, the blueprint for how I'm laying out my room in case you have a actual dedicated sewing room to sew in. And uh, my daughter's calling me. The kids still don't know that I go live every Thursday at 2, apparently. Last week, my son was texting me. This week, my daughter's calling me. But don't we love our children? Okay, so let me see how the other camera, if it's working. And last week, you know what happened? I stepped on the cord and I unplugged it. So that was me making mistakes. Yay! We have both screens. So today, I'm going to show you... And we're going to talk about different types of appliques because you have satin stitch applique, which is and was like the traditional term for applique for years. And then we have the uh, needle turn, patchwork, or invisible applique, which is the term that I coined years ago. And when we do the needle turn applique, we use invisible threads so we don't see any stitching. This was not sewn yet, so I'm going to sew this, but I'm going to also show you how I got it prepared using the Appliquick tools. And then we'll talk a little bit about blanket stitch applique as well. The giveaway is going to be three spools of, of colored thread of your choice of type because you may not want to have your thread show up a lot like we do when we do the satin stitch applique. When you do satin stitch, you want it to show up significantly. When you do blanket stitch, you, you might want it to show up as much as that, or you might want your thread to not show up quite as much. And in that case, 
then you'll want the Invisifil thread that we offer and I talk about often. And the Invisifil thread is more expensive, so we'll discuss with you as we do discuss with everybody. And then there's the Deco Bob as well. So when you don't want your stitches to show as much, you use a thinner thread which has a higher number. And you're going to receive a pattern from me as well. You get the um, owl bag, and I was going to bring it in here, but I forgot. And my owl bag shopping bag, it was, it was, it's been my lifesaver on airplanes. I'm going to switch cameras here. I'm back. Okay. This is the snowman mug rug. So if you were to take lower price threads, you could switch for the snowman mug rug pattern. And this is applique done with a foot and also in the hoop. So we have different ways of appliquing and you can even applique with yarn. And I'm going to show you how we do that as well. So this is, I'm going to try to keep it under an hour. No, we know that's not going to happen, don't we? Let's see. And, uh, yeah, it was my birthday. Today's the last day of my birthday sale. You got till midnight tonight, Mountain Standard Time, to uh, take the discount that you'll see at creativefeet.com. And you don't need a coupon. You just go in there and it'll automatically take it off your cart. And you're going to, you may want one of these cutter pillars when you see how they're used for applique. And let's see here. So I'm going to put my website there for you guys. You're working on the owl bag right now? I, I would leave you for a minute, but then you'd be bored while I walk all the way over to go get the bag. But I took my king size feather pillow and shoved it in that bag and my purse, which I don't carry a large purse. I, I never have really like really big purses. So my purse is about this size and magazines and water bottles and everything. And sometimes my jacket and I would shove it all inside my owl bag pattern and, and I'd take it onto the airplane and then I'd take out the stuff and leave the pillow in there and it became like a pillowcase for, for sleeping. Thank you for the happy birthday wishes. I'm 58 years old. So uh, my daughter finally said, you're almost 60. Because she knows I've been saying that I'm closer to 60 now. Once I hit 56. And she's like, you're still young. Hi, Norma from Glendale, Arizona. Well, you're not far from me at all. It's just uh, about an hour's drive. Okay. Some of the things we're going to talk about today are the Appliquick products. Appliquick, she has her own stabilizer, which you iron onto the uh, backside of your applique piece, but you don't applique or iron it all the way on the backside. You leave a quarter inch area all the way around so that you can fold over the fabric. And that is how this particular applique was done. And you see how complex that, that pattern is. It's very, very detailed and tight turns to go around right there. So I'm gonna sew that, but I'm gonna fold this and try to make it so we don't take too long. Her tools come in a little box like this. And I've had her tools since I met her. They are ergonomic. It's another use for that poster tack. <laughs> I just kind of made it into a long piece and, and now it holds these together so I don't lose them because they tend to roll around in my drawer. She used to have a skinnier version of these. So if you bought them when she first came out with them, she since made them wider in the middle, which makes them easier on your hands. And I will do this with the close camera so you can see what makes them so great. She also has these really cool pencils that are designed right on her stabilizer. So they, if you take a pencil and you try to write on the bumpy 
side or the fusible side of an applique, the pencil will fail you. And uh, so these, these are very popular. And then she has her own glue and her glue and my glue work together for this type of applique. I should have my own of hers out already. And if you were waiting on any Appliquick product, we just got our order in. And we import her products in from Spain. She, like me, at shows generally demonstrates her products all day long. See, I cleaned my drawer and now I can't find anything. <laughs> I don't want to open it, but I may have to. Oh, nope. There we go. Because the glue lasts a long time. If you've ever purchased a, uh, like a school glue and then you open it and it was dried out, you won't have that happen with hers. And she had, she used to use glue that had color. This is her new version and she doesn't recommend it on synthetic fabric. It's, it's more intended for quilting. Hi, Donna DeWitt. We just talked on the phone. I'm so glad you found your way. Sorry I had to get off the phone so quickly. You would shop for thread while on sale, but both, both of your debit cards were hacked. Talk to me when you get a way to buy. I will help you get that coupon. So you just give me a call. And uh, thank you for the birthday wishes, everybody. All right. So one glue is used to form the fabrics around and the other glue is used to iron the pieces down and that would be ours. And then you can hand sew the applique pieces on when you don't want your stitches to show if you enjoy doing that. And she has, she has her hand sewing needles, which I believe you get quite a few in the, in the box. They're size 11 needles. And that's another thing we're gonna talk about. You get a pack of needles today as well if you're the winner. And it's really foggy in Sacramento today. I'll bet it's worse in San Francisco then. As they say, the coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. I've been really cold there in the summer. I used to drive up the coast all the time and have clam chowder on the wharf. Tinkerbell just moaned. She's like, will you be quiet? So when we work with thicker thread and we want to do a satin stitch type applique where the thread shows a lot, then you'll want to use at very least an 80-12 because the thread will shred when you sew with it if you don't. A 90-14 is better when you're learning. From Ashland, Alabama. I've been to Ashland in uh, Oregon, but not Alabama. Nice to see you guys. Oh, it's sunny and clear in Livermore. Hello. <laughs> We're trying our best to get our products over, over the pond to you guys so that you don't have to deal with ordering direct from us, but uh, everything in good time. So with the Invisifil thread, the 100 weight thread, you can go all the way down to a 60 needle and that is a size eight if you're a garment sewer and you and you like to do fine top stitching on silks and satin chiffons that would be the size needle that you would want so the invisifil thread is also great for garment construction it replaces the need for silk thread and why would we want to do that silk thread tends to rot and decay and something is in my eye get out of my eye there we go that's probably Minky still floating around in the air from last week. Okay. So you'll have your choice of which needle pack that you want to get based on which applique you find the most exciting. And then the winner also gets a satin edge foot. So today's prize is, I don't know what the value is. I may have gone too far. And I'm going to show you how the creative feed attached to all machines. For those of you who don't know, it's snowing in Minnesota. That's not really a big surprise, is it? How much snow do you have on the ground already? And I don't know if you guys noticed, but this is my butterfly machine. And I promised I would use a small sewing machine this week, 
because I don't want you all thinking that you have to have big actual sewing machines to do the projects that I do. And this machine has not been open since COVID started. This is the machine I used when I was in Seattle when the first two uh, patients passed away from COVID-19. Enough, enough sad talk. Okay, here we go. Another thread that we offer is this glow in the dark thread. So you could opt to, to get that type of thread as well and make something fun for kids. Normally, when I use the cutter pillar for quilting and for cutting on top of the surface, I have the pad that is that has a bunch of lines on it. So if we can get this down here so you can see, it actually has black writing on the, the pad. And they didn't used to have an edge to edge mat is what they call it, which is a mat that doesn't have lines. And they recently released it. So if you have the ultra and you were wishing you could get the edge to edge mat for yours, which is a no black lines, but it does have lines. So I call them Im implied lines and I will switch cameras so you can get a better look at this and see what I'm talking about. Maybe a little bit dimmer. Okay, so you see how there's white lines going across and there's, there, there's centimeter squares spacing going diagonally so that you can place your pattern beneath it. Ah, making a mess. It's a waterfall of products. Even without the light tablet on, you can see the pattern. Now that's, that's not the big deal. The big deal is when you go to take your fabric and you want to lay your fabric over your pattern and trace, you can't see the fabric. And know that if you're doing the owl, I've already rotated, I believe, it would say it in the instructions and I'm pretty sure that's what I did. I already flipped the pattern pieces over. On most applique patterns, you're, you're told to trace onto your fusible, which is, we won't be actually tracing onto this fabric. We'll be tracing onto our stabilizer first. I forgot. That is also one of the things you get today. So this is the Fuse and Fuse stabilizer, and this is what we build our pieces with when we do standard satin stitch applique or blanket stitch applique. And I was hoping I could find my roll that I used a couple weeks ago so that I don't have, an, have to open one. I totally cleaned because of building the scaffolding in my sewing room. Chase is doing his job protecting the house. This is one of the appliques I did. This is a, a dress that I made for our mannequin. Her name was Zelda and she would go to every show. And you can see how I used the satin stitch for this particular applique and then enhanced it with the sequins and with the pearls. And then you can see the neckline where I actually did a satin stitch as, as the neckline. It's very dramatic. The reason I made it so wild and colorful is because we were actually at a show in Las Vegas. So she wore it and it doesn't really have a normal construction because she was a mannequin. So I have just a little eye hook in the back that hooked it onto her and we've since sold Zelda. So she's no longer part of the Creative Feet family. We used to have her in our booth all the time and men would hit on her. <laughs> I'm not kidding, it's hilarious. They'd be like talking to her and then they go, oh, she's not real. <laughs> so this is the hemline. You can see how pretty of a hemline you can create. 
but I didn't start out that good at applique. This was my son's quilt. And I made one similar to this when I was first learning how to applique. This one I treasure because my mother actually constructed, she did the applique and I, I did the uh, prairie points on the, on the edge. But I made a bare applique and it had a heart in the middle and he was holding the heart. And I did such a bad job that I hung it all the way up the wall and we had 16 foot ceilings. So if you felt bad about the quality of your satin stitching before, know that it's really not your fault. It's the fault of the presser foot and the way that we have to do things sometimes. Where can I put it now? Okay, so that's pretty much all the, oh, the pillow back here. Can you see that sunflower pillow? Somebody asked me to release that pattern. She reminded me that I had promised that I would do that. So know that that pattern will be releasing relatively soon. And I'll probably teach it um, on the show, like little pieces of it. Because there is quite a bit of technique in, in that pillow. If you look at the actual surface of it, and this would probably be better done with my cell phone. So I'm going to split the screen. And try not to make you dizzy. Gotta unplug it. There's my little Tinkerbell, all snug as a bug. And this is the pillow. So if you see the surface on that, that's done with the Octi hoops. That was plain fabric. And it's a shiny material underneath. And that applique, that ladybug, my son did that when he was like 11. This is the one of the patterns that I give you for free. The My Mother, My Best Friend pattern with Mother's Day coming up. This would be a great project for you. It's, it's kind of like a, a Mother's Day card that you hang on the wall. And that's pretty much all I could find in the, in the amount of time I had. And now you can kind of see a little glimpse of what I've got going on over there. You see I have some PVC pipe hanging up on there. And what we're going to do with that is make a king size quilt, not weigh very much. You wear a knee brace and it puts holes in your skirts. My friend Terry would relate to that. She has a, a brace and the, the Velcro on that snags on things. I have to get better cameras <laughs> and, and some camera people in here. All that costs money. You love the quilt is the, are you speaking of the Valentine quilt? That's embroidery, but you could have done that as an applique as well. All right, so let's get to the technique part of it. I'm gonna be using the satin edge foot and the satin edge foot comes packaged like this. If you already have the satin edge foot, you can trade for something else if you're the winner. And we open it up and it's a reclosable container so you can close it back up. If you buy our feet in educational specials, well then you don't get these little packages. Instead, the feet are inside of the big binder, my Creative Feet Techniques binder. Each of the feet come as a snap-on foot with a seven millimeter wide snap-on bar. If you have a sewing machine that has a nine millimeter wide snap-on bar, it is because you have an even feed mechanism and you will disengage the even feed mechanism and remove your machine's snap-on adapter off of your machine and switch it to one of the adapters that we include in the kit. If you have the Janome machine with a nine millimeter, You'll use the B adapter, just think B is best. If you have the FOF, you're gonna use the C. 
and think of it as the cute one. I don't know. And everybody else, pretty much, you're going to just snap it onto the machine snap on adapter, like you see here. Or you will, because your feet come as a screw on foot, you'll screw the foot on to the sewing machine. And before you do that, you just take and snap the foot. And don't be afraid of breaking it. Be tough. Even if you have to go, ah, you can snap that on without breaking it. Everything that we offer is warranted for life. Even if you drive over the foot with your, with your car, and this is one that was driven over with her car. I couldn't wait to see what happened. And this is what happens when you drive over one of my feet. It is actually still functioning, but is not pretty. And we were happy to give her a new foot. Two people have driven over the satin edge foot with their car. I know it's hard to believe, but it's the truth. So on this machine, even though I can snap the feet directly on, I'm gonna go ahead and use the C adapter. This is a low shank machine. So if you have a, a sewing machine and your feet kind of look like that and they're like little low shank feet, you will just snap it on like that. And now our sewing machine is a snap on foot machine. I, that is actually a true statement, even though I didn't mean to say it that way. Yeah, our cameras are pretty good. It's just me really learning. And uh, I'd like to replace this one with a camera I can zoom in on. But right now it's, uh, it's gotta do. I actually have three other cameras that are really good, but they, they get hot and they turn off. So I need to get, I have another one too, and it just is all cloudy. And it's probably a setting that I have to fix. So there's hope for a an easier, easier demonstration, <laughs> so you don't have to watch me struggle so much. This machine comes with a, a funky little screwdriver, and I don't know where I put it. So in alternative to it, and those of you who have a, a baby lock or a brother sewing machine are probably going, oh, I bet she has the same machine as me. You can use, use a coin to tighten your snap-on adapter if you don't have your screwdriver. But you do want to screw that tight with a screwdriver. Not super duper tight, but just tight so that it won't come off. And now when we want to change feet, you can just push off that foot and attach our sequins and ribbon foot onto that. Lower the foot and it may not snap on because it's super strong material. This is a very strong plastic, stronger than metal, and push, and then it snaps on. So sometimes it helps to have the sewing machine assist you. And this is the one we'll be using to applique with yarn. Which one do you want me to show first? I love the quilt that I made, that my mother made me as well. The baby quilt and the, the other one. It was nice to do something tandem. Next week, I'll be probably showing you how to do, I'm not gonna say what I'm gonna do next week because that way I won't disappoint you. But you know where I'm heading. I'm probably gonna have you guys sew along with me a little bit on my quilt. I dropped my hexi. <laughs> okay, let's see. We took these down off our site for a little while because she made some changes, but the AppleQuick company also has these already cut out and you get hundreds of them in the pack. And then you can form the fabric around them and create little hexes where you can then sew them together and you can do that by hand or using the satin edge foot. I think I'll start with the AppleQuick technique. Okay, we will we will stick with these cameras for now. 
if you want to help us buy more equipment and you're on YouTube, Super Chats are greatly appreciated and do assist us in providing you with this content every week. Okay. This, this has one yard of the AppliQuick stabilizer included inside of it. And the AppliQuick stabilizer fuses on, allowing you to form your fabric over it to create these different shapes. And what's really nice about it is after the fabric is washed, it's almost undetectable inside of your quilt. So it won't make your quilt really stiff. It is great. Yeah, anyone who's used it before. So I'm going to get that out of my way. Before I applique, I also use our hold light stabilizer. We've talked about that a lot lately. It's the one with the hummingbird on the label. And the hold light fuses to the back of the applique piece. Or you can use other fusible stabilizers onto the back of your fabric. The main body, the big part of the fabric, where you're going to apply a flower, for instance, needs to be stabilized with something that won't allow the fabric to give and take as it stretches. You don't need something this heavy, but if I'm applying for a pillow for a couch, absolutely. You can use a permanent fusible stabilizer on the back. You can also use a fusible batting on the back and applique with the batting on the back and you get really, really dreamy feeling to the fabric. That's what this has on it. It has an actual batting on the back. And this is known, known as Pellon. It's a fuzzy day. Almost every time I film, there's stuff sticking to me. All right. So this is how the product works. We're going to take her glue that I found in my drawer. Let's see if I can get situated really good here. Most important thing is that you guys can see, right? Now you don't need a light for doing this. However, it helps you when after you start bringing it over to make sure that you didn't miss an area on along the outside perimeter of your piece. This is normally a very challenging thing. It's dark fabric. You can't see through it that well. And one of the things that Rosa does is she uses, Rosa is the inventor of these products. She uses um, like tweeds and ga gabardine, some really, really rich fabrics to do her appliques. So this has a, has a um, it's not permanent. And what is really cool about it is that it takes, it takes longer for it to, my daughter just tried calling again. I hope everything's okay. There are some members of my family that are not well right now. And I'm hoping that it's not something like that. So I just write with the glue around the edge. And then instead of using your, instead of using your fingers, use these tools here. This one has like a spatula shape to it. And this one, a fork. And on the opposite end of both, there's points. One is pointier than the other. And basically what these do, think of them as your fingers or extensions of your fingers. And she just, she's so fast at it. <laughs> one time we went to dinner and I came to the table and she goes, come here, come here. And and she went like this and she just threw down a whole bunch of quarter inch little round circles like this that she had turned under. That's how small you can go. So instead of putting your finger like this and trying to bring your, your fabric over with your fingers, you use this as the fingers. And when you push down with both, the fabric is locked. When you, when you want to spin it, you just lift one toe and then you can spin it. So this makes for 
a much easier experience. I don't know where my other oh, is. So there's the glue. I'm glad she's not watching. She'd be going, Claire, you're doing such a bad job. No. You just go like that. Scoop it up. I probably didn't put enough on there. This is the kind of thing I don't do all the time. So I get quiet. There we go. So why is this better than the glues that have color? You have a considerable longer time to manipulate the fabric so that you can get your circles to be not pointy. So I'm not going to do this whole thing because I'm not going to sew it right now, but I did do a quilt, a modern quilt with a bunch of these circles on a neon fabric for one of the shows I was at. And circles are really easy to stitch. You can see how smooth that, that circle is now instead of it being a little pointy and a little pointy, but if I needed to, I could, I can get up on there and still manipulate it. It's still not dry. And this is, I guess, why she recommends that you don't use it on a slippery fabric like lame or something because it needs a little bit more time. After you take your shapes like that, then you put the liquid based. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on those that you need to know. And you just take our liquid based and you do some dots like this and then you position slide your finger across and then you can just position this on top of your fabric and that is what is holding this down right now is just our liquid base glue does that make sense do any of you have any questions about that let's just glue this little guy down real quick uh-oh. The dog is barking. So when you do the hexes, she says don't cut your fabric in a hexagon shape. Cut it in a circle. And then the hexes are easier. And I will probably do a hexy video. I will, I will. Showing you how to make them faster. So you don't have to hurt your fingers hand sewing things. But of course, you'd be sewing this next to another hexi to create a hexagon quilt, but you can also use hexes as a piece to applique down. And that's it. It's held in place, and this acts as a stabilizer as well, so you don't have to worry about your fabric shifting on you as much. And since we're going to use a different type of stitch, you really don't need to back the main body of your fabric like you do for a satin stitch applique. So you don't need to hold light on the back. Good, everybody's understanding? Hi, Lorinda. Did you get your prize? Did you get your, your uh, giveaway prize? Pretty sure we shipped. We just have one prize behind to give away. So what we're going to do on this is we're going to use the satin stitch foot and we're going to use a zigzag stitch that's super small. And I usually would use an invisible thread so that you don't see it. The uh, challenge for people is which, which color of the invisible thread should you use on the fabric. And the way you choose that is by laying the colors down over the fabric that you're going to stitch on. And it's this fabric that we're trying to get the thread to disappear in. I have a clear somewhere. Where did you go? Did a bunch of photo shoots for our new Creative Feet site that we're building. And I know I had that thread out a minute ago, or this week. I don't know what I did with it. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to use smoke today, but I believe that Clear would be better, better on this. I don't want to make you wait while I walk around looking for things. And we could also try to try to match it 
with the Invisive Fill 100 weight thread as well. Your choice. Now if we take and we use a really thin thread and we have a really big needle, then we'll create a, a larger hole in the fabric than we actually need. And when you go to stitch through this, you'll actually see a hole in the material. Let's see if I can give you guys the right angle. So the needle exits and then it leaves a little hole. And if you use a sharp needle, you actually are creating a cut in the fabric. Some people do teach you to use a sharp needle for applique and it's okay if you do that as long as you're not going to wear this garment or sit on it if it was a quilt because a sharp needle will cut through those fabrics and tear when the fabric stretches under someone or on someone as they move and the fabric's bias stretches because remember even a cotton fabric has a bias. So since I'm using a really thin thread, where'd those needles go? I'm going to switch to a finer needle. I don't think I need to go all the way to a nine. I'm going to go ahead and use a 7010. I think my needle threader is not on this machine. I need to get it serviced. And like I said, I haven't sewn on it since it got back from Washington. You know, Susan, our, our products used to be all over the United States. It's kind of a sore subject. Sewing machine company started copying me, so a lot of the stores don't. But you could ask. They are available for any store that wants to carry them. They can call us and arrange to become a dealer. There are dealers that do sell them. We just don't know all of them because we do sell through distributors as well and they sell to the stores. Hi, Sewing Machine Workshop. These are products that you can carry if you're a store. Are you a, a mechanic? What kind of business are you, Sewing Machine work, Workshop? I like helping people to promote themselves. Now I am using this, oops, come on, Deco Bob. I have microphone and tripods in my way. This is the Deco Bob thread. You're from the UK. Welcome. We, I think there's more than one of you from the UK today. So this is the Deco Bob bobbins that we offer at creativefeet.com, already wound. They're 80 weight threads, so that bobbin lasts a long time. If you think about a normal bobbin thread being 40 weight, so it'll double the length of time you have to go before you wind another bobbin. And it worked great with all of the threads in the needle that I've used. So this will be my first time using it with invisible thread in the needle. Oh, you actually are in the U.S. right now. What state are you in? Hi, Norma. There's something behind my machine. It is behind your machine. The invisible thread? <laughs> is it really? Let's see. I don't... I think you're seeing another type of thread. That's our lingerie thread, which is about to release again. We were out of it. I try not to stand up too much on set. Because I knock things over. Yeah, there's no... I don't know where I put it. Somewhere. It's okay. It's not like I'm making anything that really matters. Nylon thread stretches, so when you run it through your tension to wind a bobbin. You want to wind your bobbin slower. You are welcome to use the invisible thread in the needle and the bobbin for your project. But it's not necessary that you use it in the bobbin. Now if you were to, winding a bobbin of invisible thread, and the nylon is the only one I recommend. I do not recommend polyester or the monopoly because it is polyester and it doesn't stretch.
You have a good quilt shop near you? Well, I appreciate anything that you do. A lot of, There are stores that don't know about us because our industry is uh, kind of messy. Of course it matters. <laughs> I can't wait till I find the needle threader that I, that I found. But we're going to carry them on the site. And uh, till then, bear with me. Where's my glasses? There they are. Oh, my hands are so dry. It's actually the glue. It looks like my skin is dry. That was pretty good. That well, wasn't bad at all. I have lotion just for this type of thing. So no, yeah, that is not dry skin. That is the uh, glues on my fingers, but um, so Rosa, or when I showed you how to use her products before, I have a, I re recommend you have a damp towel next to you so that you can wipe off your hands and wipe off the tool. She also has a pad of paper that she uses and she opens up the pad and on the left side she glues and on the right side she does something else. can't remember what she does on the other side, but she uses a piece of paper underneath to keep everything clean. You're my new friend here. <laughs> my name's Claire Rowley, if you don't know who I am. I'm the inventor of the Creative Feet. The foot that I'm going to be showing you now is the first one I invented. And I designed it for a woman who was born blind and deaf. She was taking tailoring at the Braille Institute when I met her. And what she really wanted to do with when I made this foot, because I modified about nine feet for her, is that she wanted to be able to do what you do on a serger. She wanted to be able to accomplish this napkin edge. Isn't, isn't that beautiful? So this is one of the prettiest stitches you can achieve. It, in my opinion, is far prettier than a serger. It takes longer to sew out, but look at the result that you get. In fact, there's a company selling napkins on Etsy who outsells everybody else because she uses the satin edge foot and her satin stitches are so much prettier. So the foot is attached and the stitch that we're going to use is just a simple zigzag stitch. The width of the stitch is one millimeter wide. Now that's so small, you may not even be able to see the needle move left and right. My hands are now slimy. <laughs> Slipping and sliding on the hand wheel. The wire is going to sit off the edge and the needle is going to be between the fabric's edge and the wire in the right swing. Left swing strikes the material, right swing goes off the edge. should probably do it on this because smoke is the right color for that one. But I know some of you want to see... My foot control is on my is over by my left foot. But I don't think I can sew left foot. Each time I say something like that, it makes me appreciate my friend who lost use of her right, her dominant side. Okay, double check, make sure that it's correct. So you see how I don't know if you can see that well enough. But left swing is going on the applique, right swing is going off the edge. And in the split screen, you can see my posture, that I am not hunched over. I have the phone and the microphone in front of me. I'm depending on the foot to guide me, the white part of the guide. I keep bringing it to the heart. That's what I'm looking at, not the needle swinging left and right, but the white part. Now, as I can't see the fabric because it's below, or I can't see it hitting the white part because we've passed it. Now we look down in here and make sure that we don't exceed. And you don't have to lower the needle because you can see where the needle is going to come down. In fact, I rarely lower the needle on a zigzag stitch. Almost always I leave the needle up because have you guys ever done a, a, a satin stitch and you turn the hand wheel, you brought the needle down, and you're pretty sure that you got it in the right 
the correct swing because it's either the right swing or the left swing that you need to bring it down and you lower the needle and you lift the, the foot and you turn the fabric and you lower the foot and then you start sewing and the needle swings out in outer space if that's ever happened to you hit the thumbs up or whatever face no 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 sad faces even though it was a frustrating moment this will stop you from ever doing that don't lower your needle on a zigzag stitch just uh just don't just don't pull the fabric out when you raise the foot and you'll be okay and i'm going to do a satin stitch applique here soon i'm going to go ahead and speed this up so watch i watch right there not the needle and then the fabric's kind of coming together and that's because this is not stabilized so the whole light would keep the fabric from this part of the fabric because it's not stabilized at all from coming moving in any way I can certainly not see that needle I don't have my glasses on and I'm also too far away from it if you've ever done applique and gotten your nose right up on the needle and and you know you still can't see it's because you can't focus on something that moves that quickly so this foot helps you see without seeing I'm just pushing toward the foot instead of uh, pushing down or moving trying to help it move you should always cut your tails my scissors are still not in the sewing room for this. I love my little Applequick thread cutting scissors so much that I carried them out in another area to do something. And I keep forgetting to bring them back in. So see how the fabric's kind of buckling there? I just lift the foot and then it releases. You can also lower the foot pressure on the machine, which I should have done. And on this machine, it's back here. It's already lowered. So I can lift it with my finger a little bit. But if you do not have a, uh, if you're, if you can't like lift the foot like that, then your foot pressure is probably too heavy for applique. I generally give you the instructions for all of this. So you want to use light pressure and you want to go one number less than normal on your thread tension. The stitch width on this is one millimeter wide and the stitch length is one and a half because that's its natural or automatic function. And this wouldn't show at all if this was clear thread or even pink thread if you use the Invisifil 100 weight thread. So I'm going to move off of this because it's not about finishing everything today. I'm going to go ahead and cut this and we'll, and we'll do, I'm going to show you our petite machine applique. Because petite machine applique is a technique we do with a folded under fabric edge. You can also do trapunto applique with the same technique. So using the Appliquick technique, your, your fabric is not fused to this fabric. The stabilizer is fused to the top of the heart. So if you wanted, you can go ahead and you can cut a little slit in the back and stuff it with batting and create a puffy shaped heart which is one of the techniques you'll find in my creative feet techniques workbook and on the video if any of you have that i call it trapunto applique and i published my techniques back in 1996 so they've been around a long time the term invisible applique is mine and uh okay so now i'm going to put some of our thinner thread in and show you a satin stitch on there and I'm going to use pink nope that's 40 weight why not I'll do a little 40 weight too I don't know I got a tin needle in that would not be advisable I should not do that and I therefore will not do that because I'm teaching you what to do and that's polyfast as well here we go remember we're we're not making something that matters I'm going to do a satin stitch with this and this is the number is not on here but this is one of my favorite colors of the Invisifil. Careful of my fingers. We don't have any problem with our fingers here. Everything I teach you, I teach you your fingers are not near the needle. Only once did I ever hit my finger with a needle and it was because a student way back in the 80s when I was teaching machine embroidery without a foot and without the octi hoops 
thought my fingers were getting too close to the needle and she she gasped and then I did like hit my finger but just a teeny bit not enough to do the damage I've seen some people do it's in my emojis somebody must be teaching you guys something some of you are on YouTube and some of you are on Facebook and mostly YouTube Down at the bottom in the chat, they have like a smiley face, I think, that's where you, right near where you type, and that's where you'll find your emojis. There we go. And you can share videos on YouTube to things like Facebook. But we're not putting too much pressure on you guys. Here we go. So now I have the exact same set up and I'm going to sew a little bit with that I shouldn't have to worry about checking the needle because I didn't move the foot but just in case I double check myself so this is the exact same stitch and now you can see a little bit more of the actual thread and I'm going to shorten it to a satin stitch setting which is halfway between zero and one. This is when you would definitely want this fabric stabilized because we're doing a, a satin stitch. I haven't done it with this thread before. I usually use a polyester or a 40 weight. Yeah, you only have to sew through your finger once to never do it again. Should any of you ever sew through your finger, they're talking about like free motion sewing or I don't know. Just don't look at your fingers when sewing. That is the number one way to sew through your finger is to look at your finger because then you'll kind of move toward it. And if you do get a puncture wound like that, soak it. Soak it in salt water and because puncture wounds hurt worse the next day. If any of you have done it before, you know, but we don't want to scare newbies. See how my fingers are not near there? I'm going to go wider on the stitch. This is too narrow. That means I have to move the pin on the foot so that I don't break the sewing machine needle on the wire on the foot. Definitely need to stabilize this fabric. It's not, not working. It could be that I have no glasses on. Can't see what I'm doing. Oh, gosh. This is what happens when you don't wear your glasses or have the wrong stitch on the machine. I had the wrong stitch. <laughs> I think some of you are like wishing me to make mistakes so that I make them so that you get to see how I do it. Now you'll see that the thread has some slack in there and you might think, oh, I got to start all over, but you just pull the thread toward the spool and it tightens that thread right up again. So let's see, this is really thin. It's too thin is what it is. Too thin for the technique that I'm trying to show you. Make sure that I have room. Okay, and now I'm gonna shorten the stitch length and I usually tell you to do it while you're sewing so that you get the machine doing the feeding instead of you. Yep, definitely not, not a good thread for it. It needs a bigger thread. So we're going to go ahead and change needles because I have a tin needle in and a 40 weight thread is too big for the groove going down the front of the needle. Hi, Joanne from Australia. One day I want to go there. I used to be allergic to a lot of foods and I couldn't take a, a flight that long for risk of possibly getting sick. Let's see. Well, that is just, this was me teaching about fusibles and not getting it on the top. So here we go. Change to 
And I did bring one of these. It's just not quite as bright as that. Yeah, I'll use pink. What color thread to use is the fun part, right? We have 210 colors of this kind of thread for you to choose from. I'm not allergic anymore. Yes, I'm very grateful. Still feel a little bit nervous about eating certain foods, but I was able to go through bio bioenergetic feedback therapy to get rid of my allergies. I forgot to change the needle. Okay, let's not talk about sewing through fingers anymore. We're not going to do that. It's that laws of attraction thing. Talk about it too much and it might happen. We are officially at one hour. I'm hoping that I won't run long today. I'm going to go ahead and use a 9014, but an 8012 would be adequate. They do have that, and I shouldn't talk about it. You want to email me privately about how I got rid of my allergies, you can. Remember, I'm working without a needle threader today. This is my little butterfly machine. And I would say that this is my favorite, one of my, I can't say it's my favorite, but it's one of my faves of all the machines I've painted. So now on this, I want to see the stitch more. So I'm going to go to a three and a half millimeter wide width, just because I like that width. And now you can see the wire could get struck. So I move the nut moving the wire. So this foot is a foot for a variety of different widths of stitches. And after I do this, I'm going to switch to blanket stitch and show you that as well. Let's see if I move the microphone up, move this down. Now that's ah, too wobbly. Nope, can't do it. This is the one I want. I want a camera I can zoom in with. And it's the app that won't let me zoom in. I'm so sorry. Don't look at that screen. All right, here we go. Notice that my hands are not touching the fabric. So you only touch when needing, when needed. I didn't lower my tension. One full stitch number, one full tension number lower than normal. Ignore the sewing machine needle. Oh, I'm not doing it right. <laughs> this is how it would be on a satin stitch foot. The wire would be out of the way. With the satin edge foot, we bring the wire over. I'm like, why am I having to watch the needle? Because I didn't do it right. With the other technique, we don't swing over the pin, but in this technique we do. We swing over the wire and that'll prevent your fabric from tunneling. Now I watch the white part of the guide and I just keep bringing it back to the pink fabric. Ignore the needle and there's no way I could see the needle if I tried right now. I'm watching the white part of the guide. It's standing still. It's easy to see because it's bright and white. And I bring that fabric back to the guide, bring it back to the guide. If you start feeling like you, you're, you're not moving fast enough, then you just lift the foot a little bit and then move it over and then drop it. You don't lose your needle position because the foot and the fabric are actually connected to one another. And you could stop and lower the needle and stop and lower the needle and stop and lower the needle and stop and lower the needle, but you don't need to with the satin edge foot. Not nearly as much as you would without it. Now I go in as far as the stitch is wide, lift the foot and see how the fabric lifts with it. They actually are stuck to each other. To disconnect, to turn a corner, you push away from you and then the stitch falls off the wire. Now it's free to move in any direction. 
which might make you nervous. I've had students go, I feel sick to my stomach. How do I turn that without bringing my needle down? <laughs> and he just, all right, enough of this talk. But are you talking about safety glasses now? Wear my glasses? They're for seeing, not for protection. Sewing machine needles are tempered. They're designed to break above the eye of the needle so that the thread stays in the eye of the needle and the needle eye doesn't, or the, the needle can't break apart and fly into your face. In case you didn't know that. I'm sure there's some off cases that where that needle tip breaks below the eye, but it's probably very rare. Yes, the glasses do make it easier. Thank you for reminding me to wear them. Oh, yes. So now you could get stuck because you got to go over the stitch that you've already been on. So to you increase your stitch length just a smidge so that the feed dogs pull further for you. Remember, you shouldn't be the feed dogs. So to see if you need to increase stitch length, you kind of let go for a minute and see if it feeds. If it doesn't, then you increase your stitch length. Now I'm going to switch to a blanket stitch because this is not just about one type of applique today. And a blanket stitch, your machine may not have it. This machine may not have it. These are all the stitches on this machine. And I never memorize them. So the blanket stitch. Blanket stitch is this one right here. So it's number 39. I have to push that button on my machine. There we go. And then 39. And don't worry. I'm going to show you guys how to do it if you don't have a blind uh, don't have a blanket stitch. Although sometimes I would say or you can just say I need a new sewing machine cuz I need a blanket stitch. Hi Cindy, I'm glad that you're retired so you can sew too. One day I'll retire. Probably not. No matter what, we all retire at some point, right? So you see how the stitch is going back and forth several times, and then it will swing over to the right. And when it swings over to the right, that's when you want the wire on the foot to be just right of that. Because if the, if the needle is swinging over the wire, then you will not have the stitch right off the edge. The stitch will be a little bit past it. However, when it is in that position, this is a time when I match my bobbin and needle thread together, by the way. I'm going to lower my thread tension and hope that will stop coming up to the top. So as we go around an outside corner on this, we do lower the needle and then lift the foot a little bit. And this is when I, I can't, I just can't see. Oh yeah, my guide's way out, away from the needle. It might make you nervous because you actually will be touching or the needle, I'm sorry that this camera's moving once I get it in position. It's me bouncing against it. On the two-part video on this pattern. The first part is doing the applique on this and I do I have the right camera for this. When I film and I'm not live I can edit and move cameras and get really really tight angles on it. The videos for this pattern are on our site. You can watch it today. Look for the Wise Owl shopping bag pattern. And the first part is the applique. The second part is how to construct the bag. You work harder after you retire? I don't know if I'll, if that's possible for me. <laughs> I'm an author as well, so retirement for me will be writing. I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. My elbows are not resting. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. How many of you say that now before you start sewing? Is 
Zoom, zoom, zoom. I think this machine's forward and reverse needs an adjustment. Okay, I'm gonna, I said I was going to show you how to do it with a... If you didn't have a blind hem or a blanket stitch, and this is what you do. So you have a blind hem stitch that looks like that. And that blind hem stitch, when you shorten it, it gives you a dainty looking stitch. And I actually prefer it. How do I get back to there? I haven't used this machine in a long time. So I selected the pattern, the stitch pattern, and now I'm going to narrow the width of it a little bit, but I, you only have so much control of your blind hem stitch. And then you can shorten the stitch length down to a certain point. So you're, you are limited as to how small you can make this look. Okay, that's too short. Maybe not. Shorten the, the thread tension back down to one number less than normal. Are oh, you going to see? I just, I think this is really cute. It's also not moving forward and back, so it's much easier on the material. And let's just go ahead and look at this. This was not a prize winning project here. See how tiny that stitch is? Isn't that pretty? So even if you do have a sewing machine that can do a blanket stitch, you might prefer that to this heavier, bulky looking stitch that you get from the blanket stitch. And you have the satin stitch. And ultimately the invisible stitch. And there's more applique techniques. I was gonna do the sequins and ribbon and then we're going to end it. And the reason I'm not going to run long today is because I tried to plan not to and also because we're still trying to get all your orders out. Some of you were on orders that came in on the 8th. That's how many orders came in. It's just been wonderful and exhausting. If I feel like it, I might show you one applique technique on the Octi Hoops. This is why I run long, because I just love hanging out with you guys. So I have this yarn. I wonder how many are, of you are lurking in the background and not participating. You say it while you're sewing. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Sandy, that is not a, an actual blanket stitch. That is the blind hem. It's this stitch right here. So if you look on your sewing machine and you see your standard blind hem stitch, that's what it would look like. And then you narrow the width and you shorten the stitch length and then you end up with that dainty look. I'll show you one more time because if someone's watching, they'll go, show me, show me. So this is a blind hem stitch. Not a, bl not a blanket stitch. You know, where to go? There we go. Ta-da. Okay. Now we have yarn, and I want to stitch over the yarn to do an applique. And that is what we did on this. My sister Kathy did this. It was a panel that you could buy. This way. When I split the camera this way, I don't always have the, uh, I don't always put my stuff where I should. Sorry about that. So this is the Animal Ark Little Children's Vest pattern that came out. I don't know what year it was, but any panel that you buy, you can stitch over to make it, uh, to enhance it. If it's a, if it isn't actually cut pieces that you applique on, but you can see this actually was, and 
They had elephant ears. This has been handled by thousands of people. So it's starting to show the people going, look, look at the shows. So this is the, this is actually thread, the green and the silver. Everything else is yarn. So she used an eyelash yarn for the lions. And then the camel, this is a metallic yarn as well. And she left a little tail hanging off. And then finish it off with the satin edge foot. And you can see satin edge, I don't know what just fell. Something just fell. Ah, okay. So this is the satin stitch that I did for the applique. But this time we did it off the edge. And this says cotton on the top and fleece on the bottom. So if you've wondered about how you can finish fleece off, the satin edge foot works beautiful on the edge of that. I forgot to show you the tracing on there. Oh goodness. There's only so much I can show you in each day, each week. I need to limit it. Limit myself. Is that what fell? Oh, it was my glue. Good thing I put the lid on. But if you drop our glue on the floor and you don't have your lid on and it gets stepped on and it squeezes out onto your floor, remember it's water soluble stabilizers. So you just need to get it wet. This isn't the thickest yarn I have, but it is one that I have close enough to me. So I'm going to, to insert that into the guide. Which opening should I put that into? The large opening or the small one? I'm glad you're having fun, Donna. You sure are being active. Yarn is how I feel standing in front of the mirror. I may look this big, but I feel there's a skinny girl inside. So if you squish and roll that, it actually compresses to its true size. And this is actually thinner than the small opening. But we have to get it into that hole. And I'm trying to find the end. There it is. Eventually. There we go. And the trick that I use, some of you might be thinking about using those dental floss things. And you could do that. But I find that a piece of thread is usually laying around as trash anyway. And you just lay the thread down. And then you lay your yarn across it and grab the two ends and bring them together. And this, by the way, is our sequins and ribbon foot with the eighth inch accessory guide attached to it. Hi, Linda. You have a Bernina 790? Yes, our feet fit every sewing machine, no matter how new or old. On the Bernina machine, you'll need a Bernina adapter. And I was going to have one in here, but I didn't. But this is the Bernina snap-on adapter as well, which your machine can use. If you have this, then you're ready to go. You can just snap our foot right on to, the, to that. And then you just slide it up and pull it down, and you now have our foot attached to your Bernina. See how I just pull that through? And now the yarn is inserted into the tube. This is different than other types of feet for couching, and this would be the most common thought of couching is yarn being stitched down. Hi, Pearl. You got lots of yarn. You got lots of stuff to applique with. I just dropped the satin edge foot. I put lotion on and my fingers are slippery. All right, here we go. This would be a time to use the invisible thread. But I'm going to leave it on because I don't want to make you wait while I keep unthreading. Yeah, I wish that vest was still available. I wonder if it is. I don't know. May as well go around this heart. We'll do the little one. Where's my glasses? I should have a t-shirt that says, where's my glasses? Have you seen my glasses? And then have them like hanging on the shirt. 
I do have plans to do some t-shirts. Eventually we'll have like shirts to give away. Because I'm an artist as well. Okay, this has got to get out of here. I got a whole bunch of stuff in front of my machine. There we go. I have that cute little blanket stitch on. I'm going to leave it on. Make sure that the stitch is forming over the yarn. I feel like I need to move it a little bit that way. I'm going to go a little bit longer on that. So remember, this is just a blind hem stitch. And when you reach the corner, you can, you can lower the needle if you want, but you don't need to, just as before. Oh, I'm going to show you one more applique technique after this. <laughs> yeah, it's going through the small hole. And you could actually go two times thicker than this and still use the small hole. Because remember, it's how small it squishes down to that determines what's, which foot you use or which opening you use. And you can even use this type, this really thick yarn. And in that case, you would just use the guide that is attached to the foot when you purchase it, which is the quarter inch opening. So we have four different size openings to accommodate all these different size yarns. You can also use a straight stitch and sew right through yarn and sew it on top of a quilt with batting. If any of you have seen me at shows, I like pull up a quilt and then I'll just show you. But I don't... I see one, but it's, it's a little bit far from me. And this is about applique. Anyway, there's another day for quilting. Quilting is coming. Forgot what I was doing. Thought I was using the satin edge foot for a minute. Okay, stop with the needle. Up. Turn. Thread comes, thread gets sloppy, then you just pull it back toward the spool, which is mm -hmm. off to the side of my sewing machine here because I don't put the spool on the machine. This one I want to finish. You could also use, as I mentioned, a straight stitch or metallic thread to add like a little glint, glint of metallic onto the yarn. Now we come up to the end. We're going to cut that yarn short, get rid of our tail. And I'm tempted to look here, but I'm looking here. This is, you want to keep bringing it back to the, to the shape. And then you use a zigzag stitch called a multiple zigzag stitch. And that is this one. Come on, focus. Why is it so much harder to see that one? There you go. So basically the stitch does a zig, 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 zag, 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 zig, 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 zag, zag, zag. So it won't show up as much. And this is how we would finish the end so that it doesn't fall apart. And you can see that it did make a knot on that back side. See how cool that is? All right, one more applique technique using the pearls and piping foot. Take this foot off. And this is the pearls and piping foot. And for those of you who have a snap-on adapter already on your machine. If your snap-on adapter adapter is seven millimeters wide or your feet that came with your machine are seven millimeters wide, which 
is just under a quarter inch on a ruler, then you'll be able to just snap our feet right onto your snap-on adapter unless you want to use our little white adapters that come with each foot. Okay, so I'm getting pearls. I'm trying not to knock anything over. My little drawer of goodies. And this foot is also going to allow you to sew them on the edge. This is a, a video on our YouTube channel. The, I have a technique for bonding lace to fabric. And then you do a satin stitch on the edge and then add pearls to the edge of that. And this was monogrammed using the Octi Hoops. This was a zigzag stitch, but it is the Octi Hoops, not an embroidery machine. So you all can construct that. It's a great lesson and it's free. It's one of the, it's called the Champagne Mug Rug. No, maybe. It might be called the Champagne Mug Rug. I can't remember. So this time I'm going to applique over beads. And you can have the stitches show or not show. Now I don't know which side to put the washer on. You want me to show the yarn again? Yes, I will do whatever you guys ask because we're live. And if I weren't live, you could rewind me. Is that easy to see? So after a little bit of time, the yarn fluffs up and the stitch becomes pretty much not visible. And if you have metallic thread, it's really cool because it just kind of shines a little bit. But remember, you can use the invisible thread. It's one of the giveaways today if you choose to have the invisible thread be the thread that you get. If you are the prize winner for today's session. So on the pearls and piping foot, we have this little washer and it slides left and right. It's not very easy to see because our feet are clear. Can you see that? So that is a little donut shaped washer that slides left and right on the snap on bar. And what that does is it changes the position of the beads beneath your needle. Since we don't know which side to put it on before you begin, all sewing machines are not the same in where the needle swings left and right on a zigzag stitch. You can also applique with beads using a blind hem stitch. It takes a little bravery, but you can do it. And I know that I'm going to use a regular zigzag this time, which is just the needle going left and right. In case you're a new sewer, it's right here on this machine. So it's just a zigzag, zigzag. That's a zigzag stitch. This machine has a variety of different zigzag stitches. And. So I have no idea. Is the needle going to hit the pearls with the washer on the left hand side? I don't know till I put it beneath the foot. And this is a two and a half millimeter wide pearl, which allows you to use a three and a half millimeter wide zigzag. One millimeter wider than the bead is what I recommend when sewing on top of the fabric. Yes, all of this is in my workbook and DVD. So you don't have to remember what I'm saying here. Now the needles come in kind of close to that, but I'm not seating. I think we're okay, but I'm going to see if it looks better on the other side. I can't remember on this machine. Gather. So how many ways of applique have we learned today? Needle turn or invisible? or also known as patchwork. Regular satin stitch. Ah, yep, definitely for this machine, the washer needs to be on the left-hand side. Do not be afraid of breaking the sewing machine when you push our adapters, they won't break. I'm gonna put 
the pearls on the outside of that. Should I? Thumbs up if you want me to put it around here or if you want me just to applique. I should just do an applique because that's what we're talking about today. But these are beads. Can you actually turn corners with beads? Yes, you can. Double check. Always double check because you know why? That washer, after you use it for a while, it will become real easy to slide when you initially get the foot tight. But after 20 or 30 slides left and right, that washer can slip so easily that you move it over and then the thread taps it and it rolls over to the other side. So we always double check by turning the hand while always toward you when you ever check to see that the needle is in the correct position for sewing. Applique, yes. Okay, so I think we're good, but do I want my stitches to show? Or do I just want a little bit of a zigzag? The nice thing about doing this is you have choices. I'm going to shorten it a little bit because I like a little bit. I, I don't really think that the thread in between the beads is that pretty, do you? It's kind of nice to cover it up with something that accentuates like metallic thread or just this is a 40 weight thread so it doesn't take as many stitches. It's going to take less time to sew. I'm at a one millimeter wide stitch length and we're going to sew all the way to the corner and this time I am going to lower the needle in the outside swing, lift and turn and see how I kind of lift the pull up on the foot lever harder and it lifts up higher to allow me to move the beads underneath the foot. You got to make sure you bring it all the way down afterward. And you may think it's down, but it may not be down. On this machine, it makes a noise if I don't bring the presser foot down. And if you don't bring the presser foot down, the thread on the top, the tension discs are open when the foot is up to make easier for you to thread. I just left out a word in that sentence. Okay, so when you lift the presser foot, the tension discs open so you can thread the machine. If you don't put the foot down, the thread, the tension discs remain open and the thread falls to the bottom and creates that sloppy bottom people call a bird's nest. So we lower the foot and sometimes with this foot you won't know it's down. And now I'm going to do what's called a I kind of, what I have, a, I have a name for this. Do any of you remember what I call it? Walking. I walk the stitch, which is kind of like taking the dog by the leash instead of letting it run. One stitch at a time. But remember, we, we do want it to be a satin stitch. We want it to look pretty. And once you see it feeding, in the, it is riding on the beads there. Don't watch the needle. Watch the front. Watch that pearl. It's about to go under. And it keeps getting replaced by the, the next pearl. If you look at the needle, you'll go off the edge or on the fabric. You want to keep your eye always focused on the front of our feet, elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Do not touch the pearls. My hands are not touching them. Watch the front of the foot. Watch the front of the foot. That's me coaching myself. Watch the front of the foot. Watch the front of the foot. Because as you're sewing, you're going to go, oh, look at the needle. It's so dangerous. I'm going to hit the beads and the beads are going to go, no, look at me. I'm so pretty. And if you don't pay attention, if you don't watch that bead, well, you're going to go all over the place and the beads will automatically go with you. See, I'm not moving the beads over, moving the beads over. This is why you want my foot. I'm the inventor of this and all the companies that came out with one did not copy exactly. They made a lookalike and you cannot do this with their feet. You can't just spin around so accurately without having to move the pearls around on top of the fabric. Watch the front bead. Keep your eye there. Now we're coming and we're going to do an inside turn and I'm once again going to lower my needle and I always in this case lower the needle in the outside swing so the further away from the direction I'm turning. And it's just always going to be a little bit challenging for you guys to remember which position to bring your needle down until you do a lot of the uh, process of doing this. Now I'm going to walk the stitch, remember, lift and do one stitch. 
making sure that I lower the foot all the way with each stitch. And this time I'm just gonna do the stitch by hand, turning the hand wheel always which direction? Always toward you, never away from you. Lift and hop. I just turned on the light tablet. Da 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 da. I love that. <gasps> so sorry, you guys. I hope you weren't staring at that camera. That's what I get for playing around. Okay. I see that I didn't put enough thread there, so I'm gonna back up and walk the stitch again. Put a couple more stitches there. And once again, we don't have to pay attention there anymore. Now we watch the front of the foot and keep watching that pearl. The one that keeps going under keeps getting replaced by another pearl. I'm not pushing or pulling or grabbing my fabric elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Watch the front of the foot, ignore everything else. Well, you do kind of want to pay attention to what's going on because you might, your beads might be stuck on something and then that would cause an issue. So I do make sure that I have a loose amount and that I'm not laying on them or touching them in any way. And we're coming up on the beginning, which is our ending, because we're on a circle. And so I'm going to chop off the last pearl and get ready to be, get ready to go there, but don't look there. Watch here, see how I'm going off the edge? So we wanna lift and get it back on the edge. That was because we have a light pressure. It's real easy to move your fabric when your foot pressure is so light. So you can just swing it right back around. First time you do this, you might be a little nervous, especially if you've tried this with other brand of feet and didn't succeed. So I'm coming up here and I'm like, okay, which bead am I gonna cut off? Well, I don't know yet. Don't rush that decision. Cause you can always cut off a bead, but you can never get it back if you cut it off too short. So I'm coming up here and this camera is so close. I need to see what I'm doing. I'm walking it again. Taking a walk with my sewing machine. I'm going to look and see. And I can cut that bead right there. And I pulled the thread. It's got slack. Oh no, what do you do? You should know by now. Take the thread and pull it back to the spool. And now it's nice and tight again, but we always want to make sure that we didn't mess anything up. So turn the handle toward you and go ahead and sew. Remember, we want the sewing machine to be the one that governs how many stitches between each bead. We don't want to be grabbing and pushing and pulling the fabric through. And then you can tie a knot if you have a knot machine. If you have a knot machine, <laughs> if you have a machine with a knot stitch, you could use that. In this case, I'm going to talk about what what you would do if you don't and I don't on this machine this is a little machine with very little options so in this case if I were making something and it really mattered I would not cut my threads right now I would lift the presser foot and pull out and take this thread through a hand needle take that thread through a hand needle and bring it through to the back side and tie it off on the back since I'm not really making anything. I'm just chopping it off here. So there's yarn, beads, satin stitching, and then the blanket stitch done with a blind hem stitch and the blanket stitch done with a blanket stitch. And this looks bad because this machine needs an adjustment. It's called a forward and reverse adjustment. If I were to sew a buttonhole on this machine right now, the one side of the buttonhole would be more dense than the other. This machine was shipped in a box and, and its needle threader fell off. Um, so it, it went through some trauma on its last shipment. If you watch on uh, YouTube, you can see me paint this machine from start to finish in four and a half minutes. This is my favorite part of the machine. This is the extension table for it.
Isn't that pretty? But I didn't want to use it because I don't want you thinking you always need a big surface to do things. And this is very slippery, which allows you to quilt on top of it. Hi, Sharon from London, Ontario, Canada. We have an international class today. We have someone from Australia, a couple people from the UK and now from Canada. How many of you from the United States? What did I say I was going to do? I might do one more thing. Ah, oh, no, we're almost at two hours. Darn it. I failed again. If I stop now, we might be able to get a couple more orders out. Reno, Nevada. I've been there many times. We did shows there before. My dog is dreaming. She's barking in her sleep. I'd move the camera and show you, but it'll she'll probably stop by the time I do that. Let's see. So there are other ways you can applique. You could applique with a ribbon that we're going to carry. Should I show you? No, I shouldn't behave in myself. When I get... Hi, Red Dog Mama. Welcome back. I know you said your name before, but I forgot. Hi, Patty. Watching from Kentucky. One of my... The most fun I ever had on the road was in Lowell, Kentucky on a riverboat. It's actually the first time I karaoke. Any more show and tell? One more recap on this. This is uh, applique done free motion. So the bear's face is free motion. It's a, a feathered look on the outside. And then you can satin stitch with the satin edge foot without any applique. So you can create let me show you this up close. Uh-oh. I didn't have the phone plugged in. All this time and the battery is about to go dead. There we go. See how we've done a satin stitch? The, my, my mother did the applique. We did this together. It was a fun time. A long time ago. My son is 30... It's going to be 35, I think, in February. My daughter's going to be 32 next week. So this is the satin stitch done with the technique that I created called um, in petite applique. And this bear is actually not fused to this fabric. And then my mom used the technique which came out called um, needle turn applique. I think that's what it is. No. We sew over knitting needles. And instead of kneading the knitting needles, the satin edge foot, because it has the wire on it, you just stitch right over the wire on the satin edge foot. But then she put it, then she put it in the hoop. And this is before my octi hoops. So she would have done an even better job if, if she had the octi hoops. But she was fantastic at free motion. So she um, used a zigzag stitch and feathered around the bear and then filled that in. So this is a in-the-hoop applique. And if you get the mug rug pattern, you learn how to do in-the-hoop applique. That's this pattern here. And in this, you also learn how to make napkins little bonus these are videos on our YouTube channel this is just the pattern so you can duplicate what it is I've done and in the mug work pattern I know Christmas has already passed but you can be ready for next Christmas inside of the mug rug pattern is our stick and rinse stabilizer with two snowmen already printed out so you don't have to print out the stickers, especially considering we're sold out of the stick and rinse in the wider sizes right now. And there's a two part video for this. When you get the pattern, you get the, the URL or the address for the video. But you can watch it right now without the pattern. 
some videos will not are not on our YouTube channel publicly like the babbling brook class which is the landscape quilts that's up here that you can't really see whoops sorry here's the mug rug up close the actual stitched so you can see this is a the same technique that she did with a zigzag stitch I did here with a straight stitch because if you tried to form a zigzag stitch on a piece of fabric this narrow that's a star I thought it was dirt <laughs> you if you use a zigzag stitch on here and a zigzag here when you came to this point there'd be no fabric left all you'd see was thread same thing is true on the brim of the snowman hat and this is a zigzag stitch I just zigzagged with the octa hoops across to create that brim and then using a straight stitch I just moved the hoop forward and reverse forward and reverse to create that these are arms that are just embroidery there's just thread and then on the snowman it's a blanket stitch going all the way around the snowman so you use the satin edge foot to do applique and also applique on the actual land and this is what a blanket stitch looks like when it's balanced when the forward and reverse is correct it has a much cleaner more unified look on the stitch so it wasn't anything I did wrong on the other one that made that look wrong. It was just the machine needs an adjustment. If you have a blanket stitch on your machine and you have not been able to get the blanket stitch to look the way that you want, now you know it may not be your fault at all. So we've covered the light tablet for tracing your designs when you do applique, taking and placing the pattern beneath the clear mat and you can actually cut with a technical knife right on top of this these tablets are engineered to bear the weight of you cutting through with a rotary cutter even if you got a real strong and heavy hand on that and they come in three different styles two sizes three styles and there are they are at creativefeet.com and this is january 14th 2021 episode two of season two of fabricly speaking live and today is the last day of my happy birthday to me sale giving you 15 percent off at creativefeet.com until midnight tonight so if you've been wanting anything now's the time to order and you don't need a coupon this time be sure to join my free online school and when i say it's free it's it's free to join and it's free to ask me questions and some of you still send me little private messages inside of there and I think it's because you're afraid that you might offend me by saying asking a question that may look like I don't know that you think something's wrong with the product or and you don't want me to feel bad you can post inside of the school and I and I mentioned a whole bunch of things for the giveaway but it really depends on what applique technique you want to learn determines what gifts you get if you're the winner and uh, it takes a few days for me to find out who the winner is because of how YouTube works with this type of thing hopefully it'll get easier for us this is the lightest weight fusible stabilizer on the market you can print directly on it so that when you create an applique pattern you can actually like I, I create patterns you can print from the pattern right onto the paper but instead of it being paper you, you tape our stick and our uh, fuse and fuse stabilizer to it and it will print right on the stabilizer now that works because I designed my patterns so that they're already flipped over so that when you print on this stabilizer and this may sound confusing to any of you that haven't done applique before but when you trace something and there's one side is the right side of this is the paper but you end up cutting and then when you flip it over everything is the exact opposite of what you think so when you do the owl if you uh, do the owl 
his his one foot might not be the right foot that that you see in the pattern you might not have flipped things and then instead it's his left foot that's up it doesn't really matter in a lot of cases but sometimes it does for instance if you were doing the alphabet if you're going to applicate the letter b well you might be having a backwards b and that would be something you would have to cut and do all over again so having the light tablet helps you can actually trace right through the uh, stabilizer which here i have just to give you an example of how good this works one two and these are heavy pieces of paper four layers of paper and you lay it down on top can we see through not four but that is heavy paper let's see I got so much stuff everywhere. I should really be fair and just do, it's really just like one layer of this paper. This is the kind of paper we use for our packaging. And I can see through that. Let me give you another camera angle. Cause you can't see that you can see through it from the front. And, and after this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end because we're on, I'm, I'm going to go all the way to two hours and then we'll end. And next week, maybe I'll only be an hour. We'll see. So now you're seeing the correct camera. You see how you can see through it and I brighten it. You can't see it at all. This is what most people are challenged by. You want to trace, but you can't see it. So you place it on here, turn it on. I can kind of see it. I know that this is the brightest tablet on the market. See how much brighter it is and now even brighter. And now we can go ahead and we can trace the shapes. This is the owl's belly. And take your time. This is when it really matters. If you trace and you go like that and you just try to piece it together, then your owl's belly will not be nice and smooth. So it's, it's good to just take your time and whenever I write, I always put my hand down and move just fingers. Lift your hand and move it over and move just fingers. A lot of you lift your hand up when doing things like this. And then you're, you're not one with the planet. You want to make sure you're always resting your hand on a surface that is sitting on top of the planet. <laughs> and that your body is resting so you're stable. And then another thing that you would do is the letters or the numbers that are on the pattern so that when you go to put it all together, it would say the number seven right there for the belly and you know which one to do. Do any of you have any questions? How do you win, Donna? Well, we... Uh, there's a program that helps us do things like that, but we base it on whoever comments the most, you know, so there's quite a few of you have been active throughout the entire time and the chat shows up differently in different places. We're filming actually in three places right now. So we have to gather the most chatty people in, and then it goes into this program and it spits out the winner so that we're being fair. But if you don't participate in the chat, then you just are not, you're not entering to win. The way that you find out if you won is to actually join our newsletter because we had someone try to take someone's prize. So we are, uh, we will announce last week's winner soon. We'll be announcing last week's winner before this week's winner in our newsletter coming up soon here. I'm going to give you the actual link to join our newsletter in a second as soon as my computer boots up. It is at the top of creativefeet.com though. And know that our newsletters come out a lot more often than what you see. There's something broken in our um, way our newsletters, our archives are handled right now. This is the actual uh, 
I know I did it. Control E. Huh. Who's laughing at me? Why isn't it pasting? This is so weird. There we go. So that is the link to the newsletter. And if you're already a member, it won't let you join again. You don't have to keep joining every week, but you do have to pay attention when the newsletters come out and, and open it and see if you're the winner. That's how you find out. I generally also, if I can recognize you in the feed, now on uh, YouTube and Facebook, it's a totally different experience. And the Facebook page, I don't see your name pop up a lot of times while you're on. And then you, you, you all have your name showing up today. So I know that you, you figured it out. The first week, first few weeks of the show, um, people's names were not showing up, just their usernames were showing up. And so I couldn't find you in my customer list. So I generally will announce to you. <laughs> this is funny. Yes, that's why Donna DeWitt is talking so much. Because she, she knows that... Uh, that she can win more that way. Uh, yes, Eve, you can use embroidery thread. In fact, that is embroidery thread. This is our poly fast embroidery quality thread. What's the difference between a polyester embroidery thread and a sewing thread? Is that embroidery thread has more sheen to it. It's a shinier thread. It's like going, look at me, I'm embroidery thread. But you can still sew with it. You do not have to use only embroidery thread or you don't have to use your embroidery thread for only embroidery. Anytime you want your stitches to show, you want to use the 40 weight thread. Let's see what other, if there's any other questions that... I love that feathered effect as well on the bear. My mom was very clever. These are very, very wise words. You only fail if you don't try. The number one reason you guys don't, don't do good is because you don't even start. So Eve, I am a professional. And I actually teach factory people. I had a long conversation with someone who has a factory yesterday. They needed advice on how to get a, a fabric needle thread relationship to work better. And, uh, and I was able to assist them. So if you guys ever have any questions on something, know that it's very, 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 very unlikely. I haven't already done it. Did I say that I failed? I must have said I failed at something. I'm sorry I said that because I, I generally try to get you guys to use better self-talk. I will try harder next time not to do that. Yes, you are supposed to make the samples, the little samples, and put them inside of my Creative Feet workbook. And mostly because you build confidence in yourself. So you make a sample. And it's not, it's like this, I kept saying, I'm not really making anything. And then you put it in the book. And now when you go to, when you pick out a pattern that you want to do an applique on, you can go, I did it before. Yes, it wasn't anything that I made. It was just a sample. And that means I can do it again. And then you open the book and you have places to write notes, to write your machine settings, the needle that you chose. And I tell you really what needle and thread to use and tension and all that. So you don't have to learn. You just use it. My workbook is in essence, a sewing cookbook. Well, boy, Donna, I just clicked on you again. You did chat a lot. I see. Is there any other questions? Will the piece be washable with the pearls on it? It is washable, but I wouldn't throw beads in the dryer. And that's because the beads have paint on the outside. Underneath that beautiful pearl is a plastic. 
and so the dryer the inside of the dryer is metal and it can just scratch it and then you'll have plastic looking beads when you're done there's nothing wrong with air drying things that we decorate Let's see Okay, so I did explain why I don't lower the needle. Uh, sometimes I do, but most of the time not on a zigzag stitch because you frequently will bring the needle down and you think it's in the correct position. You turn the hand wheel, you think you got it all right, you move the fabric and then you start again and the needle frequently goes in the wrong position. And a lot of times the needle is in the fabric before you realize it's happened. Have any of you ever done a blanket stitch applique which is the stitch that moves forward in reverse and then you went off the edge at the end because you take your foot off the pedal and the machine keeps stitching ah that's frustrating and that will only happen if you have your machine set to have the needle always stop down I'm glad you mentioned that because I forgot to mention that this chair is really bouncy when you use your sewing machine you and when you buy it a lot of times if you have a computer they have it set to have the needle always stop in the down position. Go in your machine, find out how to make it stop up, and it will save you a lot of bird's nest experiences and a lot of that where the machine, because it's a computerized machine, a stitch has a particular cycle. It, has, it, it shows you the stitch on the outside of your machine, and that is a cycle. So if you have the needle stop down, it will continue sewing until it reaches the end of that cycle and then the needle's in the fabric and now you have to rip out all those stitches. So have your machine always stop with the needle up and then if you have a machine that does have that option, you just push a button to lower it so it's really not that inconvenient, is it, to have it stop up. You flip up. You flip them up on your head. Oh, your glasses. I was like, what is she talking about? Okay, I'm thinking that we've answered all of the important questions. I know that you enjoy having me make mistakes. But I prefer to not make mistakes. Last week I broke a needle even. Oh my gosh. Here's a question. Can you skip the fusible and just use basting, liquid based? I have. But I wouldn't do it without stabilizing the main body of the fabric. And the reason you can is because our liquid based is water soluble stabilizer. So if you put enough of the liquid based on the back side of the fabric when before applying it, you could applique with just that. As shows, I do that sometimes because I don't have the ability to fuse while I'm at a show and you're all sitting around my table. So some people get confused about that. Why don't I always use the glue when I'm filming live after you guys watch me at a show? At two in the morning when, yes, in fact, usually when I talk about this, this is so funny, I go, you know, when you're home alone and it's two in the morning and you're in the creative mood and you turn, you lower your needle, but you can't remember which direction to turn and then the needle goes out there. Yeah, that is exactly how I usually describe it at shows and everyone's going, oh my gosh, it's like you're in the sewing room with me. How do you know that's what I do? So it's so cute to see that you actually said it, just like I usually describe it. You never notice the smiley face on the keyboard. Well, I'm still learning too. There's somebody I watch and I like to participate. So I learned only because of that. Hi, Iris. I don't know if you're still here. But thanks for saying that. Let's see. Coming down to the end here. I know Patty. I I uh, I film, and I know that uh, there's several on this 
on here today that are feeling the same way. I make you want everything. That's my job. Actually, you know, we just have great stuff and it's, it's about having fun, you know, sewing should be fun. It shouldn't be a workout. You shouldn't feel physically injured by the time you're, you're done halfway through the project. You should be really proud of your work when you're done because it worked. Ah, you guys are saying bye to each other. You're getting to know each other. If you're in the school, you should look, look each other up inside my school. Bye, Donna. I think we're done. Do you always use the cutter pillar with the grid plate on? So um, this is actually what we were talking about. This is, this one is the uh, edge to edge mat. So you see how it doesn't have any black lines on it. And it would be a pad or a um, cutting mat is what you're looking for. This is the edge to edge mat, which you can get for the, the smaller light tablets as well. And it, they just recently released the full size one for the ultra, which is this large one that I have here. If you want to iron something while you're in the middle of working and you don't want to take a chance on hurting this, the owner or inventor of this product line, the cutter pillar line told me, and I tried it last week and it worked. I was nervous, but the glass, and this is another thing. I was like, can you make the glass without the lines? And he said, you can flip it over and take a, a razor blade and scrape off the lines. So if any of you ever want a glass with no lines, and if you don't know what this is for, this is for inking fabric on top of your light tablet. So you would have the, the design beneath the glass and you put the glass on top and you can do wet things on top of here with inks and just ink right on your fabric, right on top of the light source. But there's all these lines all over it. So I keep begging him for, I, I go, make a glass big enough for the ultra. And I want one with no lines. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I'm, I always want more than, than uh, they have to offer in the beginning. So ultimately, probably, maybe, I don't know. He said, we don't have plans of doing that right now. So I, I'll keep uh, hinting. Could you please say again when the fusible interfacing will be in, please? I don't, I'm not out of any. We have it. And if you were wondering about the Appliquick, the three yard pieces, we just got our order in. So if you're on our website and it says we don't have the three yard cuts, ignore that. Uh, I just haven't had a chance to change it because it just came in. And we actually will be cutting it ourselves so that you can have it. And no, I haven't really said it a lot. Do not ever hesitate to ask questions. This is partly why the show is a live show so that we can uh, get to the questions. Sometimes I forget to say something and afterward I'm like, man, I wish someone would have asked me. I was going to, I was like, today I really was not ready. I just went, I'm just going to teach applique. And my son's all, maybe you shouldn't do the show today. I'm like, no, I have committed myself to every Thursday and I'm not going to let them down. Even, even if it's a messy show. And I went, what can I do with my eyes packed really closed? Applique. So I hope you enjoyed how I put this, this episode together and um, know that we'll have in depth courses inside of my school on each of these different techniques as we work through the creative feed extensive course that will be opening by summer i would like to say it's going to open sooner than that but this way i can say for sure the creative feed extensive course will begin by summer unpredictable things keep happening or i would have already launched it Yes, every Thursday at 2 Mountain Standard Time.
sometimes we're the same time as California and sometimes we're not because mountain standard time does not change. We never have to wake up early at whatever time you guys have to wake up early. But we also don't ever get that day of sleeping in. And all year long we have to go, when is it that we are ahead of California? And when is it when we're behind California or the same time? Next week, I hope to have my quilting apparatus up. And that doesn't mean I'm going to show you free motion quilting on a king size quilt that week. I probably will show you piecing first and have you piece a bit along with me so I can show you how I made my quilt. And I know the number one question is how can I sew straighter? Because inside when you join my school, I have you ask a question or I have you answer my question. And my question is, what is your biggest sewing challenge? And the number one response is sewing straight. And the number one reason you don't sew straight is what? Do any of you remember from last week? Elbows off the table because the planet is beneath our feet, right? And it's beneath our chair and our table is on the planet. And we are not a pen that's just standing up straight. We have ligaments and muscles and we can wobble. So if you don't put your elbows down, you wobble. And this is what I usually do at a show. I go, everybody look at this. And now while looking at this, so if you, you can't do it on TV, I realize that we found out that you can't get the same experience. So you need to take your finger, play along with me and put your finger up and hold it in front of you. And while you're looking at your finger, focus on something past it and move your head. And you'll notice that everything behind your, your finger moves. If you've ever watched the show, the movie Under the Tuscan Sun, one of my favorite movies, she sits there and she closes one eye and, and blinks like that and the wine bottle moves left and right. So if you switch your eyeballs too and only sew with one eye open, you will also cause yourself to sew all wobbly. So elbows down, shoulders relaxed. You should be in a resting position and you should be looking in front of the, of the needle, not at the needle, because at the needle is too late. And po proper posture is very important. It has helped you a lot. Okay, I'm gonna give you another thing to do. Before you sew, you should get ready to sew. Kind of loosen up your hands and your jaw, because a lot of you are like, I'm gonna, I, I know I love sewing, but you get stressed and you clench your teeth because you're so used to things going wrong, like needle breaks or not sewing straight, or did I do everything right? Am, am I supposed to sew this to that? Or is it supposed to be flipped? I, have you ever sewn a sleeve on upside down? I have. <laughs> this is just so mind boggling sometimes. So you wanna make sure that you prepare yourself, You know, do some deep breathing, Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, and try to calm yourself. I'm going to show you what I do for my hands before I quilt, because quilting is the most likely where I tense up, because you've written your whole life holding on to pens and squeezing them. So when you hold on to the handles, the octi handles, oh my gosh, this is why I run on too long. You have this little handle in your hand and you and you write with the hoops. And that, that was last week. So watch last week's show and you'll learn more about that. But if you squeeze and push down for a long period of time, your hands get sore, don't they? And if you have arthritis and you don't even have full mobility of your fingers anymore, any way that you can hold on to, the, to a pen to write, you can do the same thing with the octi hoops and still get that mobility. But you don't have to squeeze. Hi, Sandra. From the Bay Area, is it foggy where you are? Sacramento's foggy. You have two torn rotator cuffs. That's awful. This shoulder I broke. I did a really good job of breaking this shoulder a few years back. And so I had to sew with only one hand for a period of time. When you see my quilt binding tutorial, I had my arm in a brace. You couldn't see my left hand very much. I took it out of the brace to put my hand in, in a position to show you 
what you're supposed to do, but half the time I was, you know, sewing without my hands at all. Thank you. I try to give you good tips. Now if you just stick it in your head and not not let it erase with all the things you have to do every day. Okay, so you're going to lose flexibility in your hands. Um, the, people tend to end up in this fist like shape. It's been a stressful year. You might find that you have less mobility in your hands because of the stress that we've been through. So we want to, um, you want to be able to get your elbows up like this, and make like the church look. Some of you may only be able to go this far right now. So you want to gradually get to where you get that flexibility back in the back of your hand. And you can also do that by bringing your fingertips together and stretching. Be, be gentle. Don't move too quick. If you haven't been doing these stretches, then it's, it's just like trying to do the splits. When we were little girls, we could do the splits, but can you just drop down into the splits now? So you want to gradually get that mobility back in your fingers, but you should be able to do this. And if you can't, then it's partly why you're not sewing as well as you could. Yeah. And it also helps to prevent corporal tunnel. You, your elbows down, shoulders relaxed, but you don't want to push down hard. And that's, that's what quilting can do some damage to your hands. If you don't use our Octi hoops, because the Octi hoops slip and slide on the bed of the machine and eliminating the need to push down, eliminating the need to use your upper body muscles, which is why you're able to put your elbows down and relax your shoulders. So you should pretty much be like hanging out, talking to your friends, like I am right now, talking to you guys, uh, when you're sewing. And you shouldn't ever need to do this. If you get your face that close, you're looking at the needle. And the needle is just not something you should be trying to focus on. Each of the feet that I designed, you're, you look at the front of the foot, not at the needle when sewing. These are things that will help you get better. And every week I'll try to show you something else. What lotion do I use? You know, I use olive oil at night to keep my cuticles healthy. And if your hands are slightly damp, when you put the oil on, it absorbs into your body better. But my hands are starting to show their age. But if you want to know what I use just now, Gold Bond. <laughs> this is not a sponsored thing. This is what I keep in my uh, sewing room for when my hands get dry. If you handle a lot of fabric, the fabric draws the oil out of your skin. So your hands will get dry when you sew. And you can get hangnails from that. Yes, you need to start using your hoops. I'm going to make you want to use those hoops bad when we start the uh, king size quilt. All right. I think I've answered all your questions. Thank you, Kathy. I think I heard that you weren't well. I hope you're better. Let me know if you are better, if it was you. Because now I got everyone worried about you, even though they don't necessarily know you. You use Gold Bond also. It's great stuff. Lorenda, you use it also? I have another one for my face as shea butter. Next week, I'll bring it in here and, or, and show you what it is. So it was you. So, so I'm very happy that you're better. You had double pneumonia. Oh, my God. I, I have several family members that are sick right now with COVID. So these are hard times. We have to be gentle and kind with one another. We never know what someone's going through. I know that the family members that are not well right now are all in really good spirits. So come from really tough stock. You're welcome, Sandy. And, uh, you know, I thank all of you as well. This should, there wouldn't be a show if you guys weren't coming and hanging out with me. Oh, you bought your 
you bought a you bought your feet already, but you haven't gotten them from us yet. Which is why I should have gotten off, but now it's too late for me to do any more orders today. And I am working alone right now because we are one of the states that has a a spike in the COVID. So I'm um that what do they say? The I'm a packager, an assembler, a stabilizer cutter, and order filler, emailer, host. I don't want to stress you out. How's my dad? My dad is fine. He is, I say he's 80% vitamins and 20% water. <laughs> he's always been uh, very, very healthy and eating healthy. And he's 91 years old. So he'll be 92 in May. You arrived late. Well, you can always catch up. As you know, these videos, now the, I think you can't see the uh, chat for a few days on YouTube. Which is partly why we just stopped having the, stopped having it be involving the chat. I would still have to read it though. We still have to figure out who was the most chatty. I always love it when one of you goes LOL and I totally forgot what I said that was funny. Oh my dad. I'm getting better at recalling what I said. Your mom's 90? Well, we could chat all day. I know you guys like to hang out, and I know that a lot of us are alone, and and uh, I hope that I'm filling up part of your week with something fun. And we, we have Zoom chat available through the school, which I'm trying to organize a once a month group chat where you can as many of you as wants to come on but I don't sit at the sewing machine when we do that I sit at my desk and then I I'm able to play videos share my screen and uh, inspire you that way and then we can just kind of hang out and and see each other and you bring up your camera and you guys talk so I don't only hear myself for two and a half hours now you lost your sound My mic is still on. What did you not hear, Kathy? <laughs> I never stopped talking. You're friends with me on, on Facebook, so just go ahead and uh, ask me in a private message in there, and then I'll try to figure out what it was I said. Because I need to end. Yeah, you should be able to, uh, if you're on my YouTube channel, and you hit subscribe, there's a bell and you click on bell, <laughs> you click on the bell and then do all and you should get a notification when we go live. Now, last week I was four days ahead of schedule and knew exactly what I was gonna film and was all ready. So you guys had a four day window of knowing and I was gonna ask, did you guys find it better to find out today, the same day, or was it better to know four days ahead? Because you can actually enter or click and then have a reminder on Facebook and also in uh, YouTube, it will email you. But if you don't have your emails, like if you don't read your emails or you don't have a push notification going to your phone, if you don't have your notifications turned on, then you won't receive the notifications. I try to cover you by having the newsletter go out, but we just, I just couldn't. I didn't get the newsletter out this week, and I'm, I know that some people are going to be very upset with me because they missed out on today. Is Tinker up? Oh, she was up for a second. She actually kind of groaned. <laughs> She's tired of hearing me talk. She's like, be quiet. Turn off the lights. It's too bright in here. It's warmer today, which is why she's not wearing her little sweater. Okay, we can talk all day. Well, at least I can. Yeah, if you guys are on my YouTube channel, please, the more likes you do, then the better. And I appreciate you bringing that up. Oops. The chat moved. Yeah. So when you participate, you hit as many likes. Like on Facebook, you can keep hitting 
the hearts and the likes. And the more you do that, then they take our video and they put it in another place within Facebook and we get a lot more followers that way. And the more people find out about us and the more people find out about us, well, then, you know, the advertising dollars we earn is just so teeny tiny. It's almost laughable. Uh, and if you do any of the super chats, I don't know if you are or not. I haven't seen one pop up. It doesn't mean it isn't happening. I just can't tell inside of the application that I'm using. So if any of you did give me a super chat, which is a, a money donation inside of the YouTube channel. And do you guys see the dollar sign in the chat? Because I don't know. I have been so overworked. I, I haven't been able to even tell. I have to go take care of the queen, mom. <laughs> okay, well, I'm so happy that you have your mommy still with you. I miss mine so much. If it wasn't for Facebook and YouTube videos, you wouldn't have anybody to talk to. Oh. If you ever want to talk, just you can reach out in a chat in Facebook with me. It is below the emojis. You do see the dollar sign. Okay. I just wasn't sure if it was working. I don't know if you guys are donating. I just haven't been able to look. So if you are, thank you. If you can't, don't feel bad. And uh, know that the money would goes right. Any money gained by this show goes, uh, I love you. I love you all so much. Uh, these these are this is partly why I do this. I know that you guys are. If you feel anything like I do, I'm alone, so I'm I get lonely. You guys fill up my Thursdays. I that's why I stay on too long. Four four twenty seven. Okay, so if you haven't done any housework. You can blame it on me. <laughs> okay, blame it on me if you want. I am going to not be able to see the chat anymore because I'm going to, I'm getting ready to say goodbye and I have a new ending video or window to bring up so that I can end more gracefully than I usually do. I love you all so much. I hope that you feel a little bit more brave about doing applique and know that it is one of my favorite techniques of sewing for anything from garment construction to quilts and everything in between any fabric that you want to make into something you can applique on it first and then turn it into whatever you want so just about everything that you can make you can in part do with an applique and sometimes the applique piece doesn't even look like an applique it looks like you pieced it so I, I can't wait to show you all that I know and I hope you've joined my school. If you have yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please do so today and hit the thumbs up. On YouTube, you can only hit it once, but on Facebook, you can just go for it. And I love you all so much. I look forward to being able to do, to see you in person again one day and um, hang in there. We can get through this. So with that, I love you guys so much. Bye. Mwah. See you all next Thursday. Don't forget.